It's Bible Club, it's Bible Club, it's Bible Club in our town. Good singing, good laughing, let's get the word up from. Folks are all excited. We are all delighted. It's Bible Club, Bible Club, Bible Club, Bible Club, Bible Club, Bible Club in our town. It's Bible Club, it's Bible Club. to it, but there's not just one verse, so I don't want you just looking through the whole chapter. We're just going to explain some of the things that the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 7, and also, actually, today we're going to, we're going to have a story from the Old Testament that illustrates our lesson. Who can tell us what word in our verse is the word that our lessons have been about, has the word in it? There's a word in our verse that has part, it's the same, basically the same word, same idea as our lessons have been for the last two weeks. <coughs> Maria, justified. Justified is what our lessons were about for the four weeks before the last two weeks. Maddie, sanctified. sanctified. That's right. Now, does anyone remember what it means to sanctify something? What does it mean to sanctify something? Remember? Um, let's see here. Would this picture remind us of some things that were sanctified? What do you remember, Ariane? Turn from evil. Okay. If, you, if you're sanctified, if you're working on your sanctification, you will turn from evil. Does this picture remind us of anything? No? Okay. What about this picture? Remember the name of this boy? His name was Samuel. And Samuel's mom, what? He was talking to God. And where did he live? Did he live with his mom and dad? No. No? Because his mom prayed for him, right? And said that if, if God would give her a son, she would give that son to God, right? And so she set, she set Samuel apart, right? Right? She sanctified him by sending him to the tabernacle. And he lived there at the tabernacle. And these guys were priests, right? And they were set apart to work at the tabernacle. Could anybody who wanted to work at the tabernacle? No. Only priests could work at the tabernacle. And at the tabernacle, they would bring, the people would bring offerings, meat. And they would offer that offering to God. Now, did God take all of the offerings? Lots of the offerings he didn't take. He took which parts were his? Yes. And we would say those parts were sanctified, right? They were set apart for God. But these men, they did what they wanted, didn't they? They took God's part for themselves. Yeah. Well, the other parts were good, but they wanted God's part. And they were punished for that. Do you remember there was an evil king in Israel? And his name was Ahaz. And Ahaz set up idols all over. Last week we talked about how he set up idols all over Jerusalem. And... He closed the doors of the temple. What was the temple? The temple was the place that was set apart. It was sanctified to worship God in, right? And he closed the doors. said, nobody can go in the temple because he didn't, he didn't love God. He loved his idols. He even took the furniture from the temple and broke it into pieces, right? And, but then the next king came along. His name was King Hezekiah. And he said to the priests and the Levites, he said, sanctify yourselves, right? Set yourselves apart. Make sure that you're able. And then sanctify the temple. Clean it up. If it's set apart for God, it needs to be clean, doesn't it? We don't want the place for God 
to be full of garbage and just animals running around, living there and all, right? So they, they, clean, they set apart the temple, and they set themselves apart, and then they began to worship God. And then they showed, all the people came to, to celebrate and to worship God, and they showed that they had set themselves apart for God by uh, destroying the evil things that had come into their city, right? They went and they broke down those idols. Well, the Apostle Paul, in the book of Romans, our lessons have come from Romans, and they're teaching us about sanctification. The Apostle Paul, he tells us that when we're justified, and justified is part of what happens when we're saved, when we turn to Christ in, re in repentance and faith and believe on Christ, we are saved, we are justified, and we are sanctified. When we come to Jesus, when we, come, when we turn to Jesus, God looks at us as if we are righteous. That's part of justification, right? He says that person's righteous, not because of what we have done, but because of what Jesus has done. But he also looks at that person and says, you are sanctified, right? But you're washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified. So every person who is justified is also sanctified. But there's another part of sanctification. If we're set apart by God, God says, you're set apart for me. Okay, we, we still have our own will inside of us, don't we? Even though we're sanctified, we could go and do something that's wrong, couldn't we? Even though the temple was set apart for God, they could still do bad things in the temple, couldn't they? Yeah. And so, even, and, and we can too, because we have our own mind, and we have our own hands, we have our own heart, our own will, our, and we could, I could, I could go and do something wrong, couldn't I? Even though I trusted in Jesus, and he has saved me, I could still do something wrong, couldn't I? God has sanctified me, he set me apart, I'm supposed to serve him, but I could do what I want, couldn't I? And every day, inside of every single person who has turned to Christ, there is kind of like a battle in our mind. We know we should do right, but then there's us. And we, and the devil tempts us. And we like, sometimes we want to do wrong instead of do what's right. Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote the book of Romans, told us about that in chapter 7 of Romans. He talks about how he wants to do what's right, but sometimes he still does what's wrong. And these pictures here kind of illustrate that. Whenever Paul obeyed the Holy Spirit, it's like the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of our God, the Holy Spirit filled his whole life. And everything he did was like what Jesus would do if he were here. But sometimes he did what he wanted. See how this heart is gray. And even that there's a little, we can see the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is still in, in Paul, still in those that believe him. But people don't see much of the Holy Spirit, do they? Not if we're doing what we want. When we do what we want, people don't see much of God in us. People don't see much of the Holy Spirit. When we obey the Holy Spirit, when we say, I'm going to, God has set me apart for him, so I'm going to do what he says, then... People see God. People see the Holy Spirit. People see us living like Jesus would. And each of us, each of us who's been justified, each person who is saved is supposed to be living a sanctified life. It should be doing, obeying the Holy Spirit. There was a man in the Old Testament who is a really good example of that. In fact, the Bible tells us his story, and his name was Daniel. Does anybody know somebody named Daniel? My second name is Daniel. So I think I was halfway named after this man. My first name is not Daniel. But my second name is Daniel. And Daniel, long time ago, not long after Hezekiah had set the um they they had set the temple back up, maybe I don't know, 50 or 60 years after that, the people of Israel went back to worshiping idols, and God sent the, an enemy army in 
and he destroyed Jerusalem, and he captured many people from Israel, and Daniel was one of the people that became a captive. He couldn't stay at home anymore. He had to go live with the Babylonians, and a bunch of other people like Daniel. Daniel was a young man. He was probably 15 or 16 years old. How old did you say you were? Yeah, could you imagine in two years, somebody coming in here and just taking you away, and you have to go live in another country? That's what Daniel had to do, and several other people, several other young men Daniel's age, because the people that captured them thought, they, they look like strong young men, they might even talk to them a little bit, and said, they're pretty smart young men, we want them to work for us in our government. And so the Babylonians took these men, Daniel, and he had some friends with him, and then a bunch of other people just like him, and they took them to Babylon, and wanted to teach them all about Babylon. Now Jerusalem, where Daniel was from, is where the real true God was worshipped. Do you think they worshipped the real God in Babylon? They worshipped idols. And Daniel, they, changed, they even changed his name. They didn't want Daniel to think about God. They wanted Daniel to think about their gods. They called him Belteshazzar. Yeah. Yeah. And Daniel's three friends, Hananiah, uh, Azariah, they called them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They just gave them different names, tried, started to teach them all the things about Babylon and all the things that they knew, and also fed them with the king's food. And the king, the king of Babylon, he, did he worship God? No, he worshiped idols. So he would offer, he would offer the food to the idol, and then they would eat, they would eat it. He said, want the, the idol to, to bless the food. We ask God to bless our food, right? But the, the king would ask the idols to bless his food, and Daniel knew that he shouldn't do that. The Bible says Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Now that's a word, but defile means to make bad, right? So Daniel said, I'm not going to do that. He says, I'm going to stay away from that because that's bad. What does that sound like? sounds like being sanctified, right? This is bad, I'm going to stay away from that, right? Well, you think somebody who's a captive can just say, well, I know you want me to do something, but I don't feel like doing it. No, he couldn't. So he went to the man in charge. Let's see, this is Daniel. He went to the man in charge and said, will you just give us vegetables and water? No meat, no fancy food, none of that, just vegetables and water. And this guy said, oh, I don't know, that kind of scares me. If I just give you vegetables and water and you get sick and you're not strong, the king will be upset and he will just kill me. Because I haven't given you what he wanted me to give you. So Daniel said, well, let's try this. Daniel and his friends were to be taught this way and taken care of this way for three years. So Daniel said, let's try this just for ten days. For ten days, feed us vegetables and water. And at the end of ten days, if we look sick, then we'll go ahead and eat the meat. But if not, maybe we can keep this, that's the menu forever. And so, for the three years. So, they did it. The guy said, well, I can do that. Ten days, we can, if it looks bad, we can just give you the food and you'll be fine after that and I'll be okay. But you know what happened? After ten days of eating just vegetables and water, Daniel and his three friends were stronger and healthier than all the other boys that were eating all the fancy food. God blessed Daniel because he said, I'm going to stay away from that bad stuff. I'm not, this is not teaching us that eating a hamburger is bad. But a hamburger that's offered to an idol, we don't eat that, right? So, we, so Daniel said, Daniel and his friends said, I'm going to stay away from that. I'm going to sanctify myself. And God blessed him. In fact, he continued that, and after three years, the king found that Daniel and his three friends were smarter. They had learned more and understood more than everyone else that had studied and, and all that. And so Daniel was blessed. And Daniel became a great man in the government of the Babylonians. He was, like, very, very important. Maybe we would think he's like a senator. You know what a senator is in America? There's only 100 of them in our whole country. He was a very important man. And through, for years and years and years, he was a very important man in the government of Babylon. 
And then Babylon was destroyed and another kingdom came along and Daniel remained, continued to be an important man in the next kingdom's country, or government. But, as he was in charge, he was up there really high up in government, some people got jealous of him. They did not like him. And so they thought, we want to get to Daniel. We want. But you know, they couldn't find anything that Daniel had ever done wrong. Why? Because Daniel set himself apart. Daniel made sure that he obeyed God. And he was sanctified. He wouldn't go into doing wrong things because he knew he, that wouldn't please God. One of the things that Daniel did all the time is he prayed in the morning, and then at, at lunchtime he would go home and pray, and at dinner time he would pray, and when he prayed, he would open the windows to his house. He had a window that faced toward his homeland, and he would kneel there and he would pray. And then at lunch he would kneel there and he would pray, and so anybody, he just did it to pray, but if anybody happened to be walking by, they would see Daniel kneeling there and praying, wouldn't they? Well, these people, there were some men, and they thought, we got to get Daniel, and he, but Daniel never did anything wrong. So they thought, here's what we do. They went to the king, to the emperor, and they said, king, here's, we got a great law. This is the best law you've ever heard of. Here's what we say. We say that for the next 30 days, no one can ask anyone for anything. No one can pray to any person or to any god except to you. And if they do, they should be thrown into a den that's full of hungry lions. And the king was sitting there saying, Hmm, you mean I will be the only one that can give anything to anyone? I would feel very important. And he went ahead and he signed that law. And those laws could not be changed. Daniel found out about that law. What do you think Daniel did? Daniel found out, here's a law that if you pray to anyone except for the king, you're going to get thrown into a den of lions. So Daniel, Daniel went home. You think maybe he just closed the windows so nobody could see him? No, the Bible tells us he did just like he always did. He opened the window and he prayed toward his homeland. And guess who was there? Those men trying to catch Daniel. They were there. They were listening. Oh, yeah. We knew it. We knew Daniel would pray. Why? Because Daniel always prayed. Right? So Daniel was being tested, wasn't he? It was more than just eating certain kind of food. Now, those people, they went to the king. They said, you know what, king? Daniel. And as soon as the king heard Daniel's name, he thought, oh, man, they tricked me. He was so upset at himself. He knew that they had tricked him. And so he tried for the rest of the day, trying to make it so Daniel wouldn't have to go into the den full of hungry lions. But he could not get the law changed. He had signed the law. And the law could not be changed. So that night, those men came back to the king and said, Okay, you know it's a law. We have to put them in there. And they were just, I'm sure they were acting very serious, but inside they were really excited because they hated Daniel. <laughs> you know what? <clears throat> people that don't love God hate people that do love God. If you love God and you're going to do what's right, you say, you know, I don't care if the world says it's it's just fine to, to do this or to do that or to act this way or say that I'm this way, I that's not right and I'm going to do what's right, the world will hate you for that. It will. And the, they, they hated Daniel and so the king had to put Daniel into that den full of hungry lions. And they lowered him in there and then they opened the door to let the lions come in and the king went back to his palace and he was all upset. He could not sleep at all. He was worried. He knew Daniel, and he knew Daniel had a God that was powerful, and he said with his mouth that he thought that Daniel would be protected, but when he got home, he was like, I wonder if Daniel's really being protected. I hate to lose Daniel. He's such a good man and a great man. And first thing in the morning, he went up there <coughs> to the den of lions, and he looked over there and said, Oh, Daniel, did your God save you? You think he heard back from Daniel? He wouldn't think so. But God sent an angel. Daniel said, Oh, king! My God sent an angel, and he shut the lion's mouths. And it's almost like he could have said, and he tied their paws. The lions didn't hurt Daniel at all. Now, some people think that the lions didn't hurt Daniel because they weren't hungry, and they couldn't find Daniel. But you know what? The Bible tells us that the king pulled Daniel, got Daniel out of that den of lions, 
And those men that had tricked the king, that were trying to destroy Daniel, he took them and their families, and he threw them into that den full of lions, and the lions destroyed them. So those weren't full lions, were they? They were hungry lions. And they were punished. But Daniel was protected. Daniel set himself apart, right? God had chosen Daniel, and Daniel said, I'm chosen by God, I have to set myself apart. And you are the same way. If you are justified, if you are saved, if you have trusted in Jesus, if you believe on Jesus and turn from your sin, God has justified you and He has sanctified you. He set you apart. You shouldn't just go and do anything that the world wants to do. You shouldn't do anything, things that you know are wrong. You say, I'm not going to do that. Why am I not going to do that? Because you just won't do that because you think you're, you're a goody two-shoes or you're a, you're a, you're a pious, pious poop or whatever, right? But is that why we don't do things? We don't do those things because God has sanctified us. Because we're saved. If you're saved, if Jesus has saved you, there's some things you shouldn't do. And it would be good. Some of you, I think, are understanding what I'm saying. You ought to think about some things that maybe you're often think about and you thought, ah, I don't know if I really should do that. If you don't know if you really should do that, you should not do it. It's better not better to be make a mistake not doing something, right? Than to just go ahead and do it because oh everybody else is doing it and it's really not something that sets you apart for God, is it? So we should try to live. If we're if you have trusted Christ, if you believed on Jesus, you should live a separated, a set apart, a sanctified life for God. 